Okay, guys, so this new unit that we're going to begin is uh, energetics. And so what does energetics talk about? Energetics talks about energy, energy transformations. And so we're going to begin to evaluate that. And so the first thing that I want to talk about uh, to kind of lay a foundation, I want to talk about this particular definition called the specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So you need to know that definition. The amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So let's examine that. So here I have a substance. Doesn't matter what this substance is. It's just some substance. And to make it easier, we're going to keep an easy number. Let's say that the specific heat capacity of this substance is one joule per gram per degree Celsius. And so that feeds back into our definition. The amount of heat, that's joule, that's our heat energy, okay, needed to raise it, raise one gram, it's per gram per Celsius. So anytime it's per, that's per one gram per one degree Celsius. So in this case, the specific heat capacity is one joule per gram degree Celsius. And so if this little box here has a mass of one gram, and I apply some heat to that box, and I apply one joule of energy of heat to that box, and it's one gram, then the temperature of this substance, whatever this box is, is going to increase by one degree Celsius because it has a heat capacity of one joule per gram degree Celsius. It needs one joule of energy. So I've given it one joule of energy per gram. It weighs one gram to make its temperature change by one degree Celsius. Now, since I'm giving it heat, it's going to go up by one degree Celsius. If I um, took away heat, so instead of... Uh, heating it, I put some ice cubes on it, and I took away a joule of heat, it would go down by one degree Celsius. Uh, so let's take a look. Let's, let's change it, actually. Let's make the mass of this substance, instead of the mass being one gram, let's make the mass half a gram. And so this thing has a mass of 0 0.5 grams. Okay. Now I still give it, with my flame or my energy source, I still give it one joule of energy. All right, so let's evaluate that. If I give it one joule of energy per gram, it'll go up by one degree Celsius. But it's not per gram in this case, it's per half a gram. And so how many degrees is it going to change in its temperature? Well, since it's uh, uh, half a gram, I'm, it's, the mass is smaller that mass is going to respond to that heat more, it's going to go up by 2 degrees Celsius. So you could almost take a little 0.5 here, divide the 1 by 0.5, because it's half a gram instead of 1 gram, and you get the 2 degrees Celsius. Now, likewise, what if instead of this object being 1 gram, this object weighed 2 grams instead of 1 gram? So how would that change it? I still give it one joule of energy, uh, and so by how much will the temperature change this time? Well, if it's, uh, instead of one gram, it's a little two here, there's two grams of it, it's going to go up by half a degree Celsius. So, so let's kind of summarize the idea of the mass effect on um, the temperature change or the specific heat situation. So let's say I've got three objects. They're all the same substance. Let's say this is all pieces of aluminum. Okay, this piece of aluminum weighs one gram, this piece weighs two grams, this piece weighs three grams. Okay, so let's say that I uh, impart into each of these via a heat source one joule of energy. How would their temperatures change? Which one will go up by the most temperature? Which one will go up by the least temperature? Uh, well, because this one has the largest mass, it will go up by the smallest amount. This one, the delta T here is going to be small. This one with the small mass will have a delta T that is larger. And this one will have a delta T that's somewhere in the middle uh, of 
the other two. Okay. Now, different substances can have different heat capacities as well, or they do have different heat capacities. So that can also affect our value. And so I have two substances, each one gram with a mass of one gram. And let's say that the heat capacity of this substance is one joule per gram degree Celsius. And so again, kind of what that means is that I need to give it one joule for every gram to make its temperature rise by one degree Celsius. This one over here has a heat specific heat capacity of two joules per gram degree Celsius. So I want to make this sub, I wanna, if I want to make this one gram rise by one degree Celsius, I need to give it two joules of energy instead of one joule of energy. And so once again, let's say that I put a flame underneath here and I impart into the substance is one joule of energy. Well, what's going to happen? Well, what will the delta T be for this substance? It will increase by one degree Celsius because I'm giving it the one joule that it needs to make a one degree temperature change. In this case, what will my delta T over here be? It will still increase because I'm giving it energy, so we're going to have an increase in temperature, but it needs two joules to go up by one degree Celsius. I'm only giving it half of that. I'm giving it one joule. So instead of going up by one degree Celsius, it will go up by a half a degree Celsius. And so note, I need you to note the relationship here. A low heat capacity, compar comparatively speaking, it's lower than this one, a low heat capacity will produce a larger temperature change. A high heat capacity will produce a lower temperature change if the energy input is equal. Okay, so make sure that you recognize that relationship. And so that is the basic idea behind the specific heat capacity.